I wanted to get to that flabbergasting Nick Chubb video in the weight room, but I forgot that we have Brock Meyer here. And I don't mean to sound disrespectful there, Brock Meyer, because I'm... Oh, this is going great already. Because why? <laughs> I am very happy to see you, and you've brought a real, uh, a real life here with your segments with us. And so I'm just happy to see you again. I missed you last week. I'm just glad it's you, Dan. It, it is really you, right? This isn't some AI trick. Because <laughs> you're a sight for sore eyes. Uh, let me tell you, it, it just feels good to be cradled safe and secure in your Zoom embrace again. And please don't abandon me ever again like that. And, and ever, ever, if you do abandon me, leave me with that David Sampson weirdo. Because <laughs> he was not... He was not the fun substitute teacher who'd wheel out a TV and play a VHS tape of Armageddon in science class. He was the, the weird one who would eat an egg salad sandwich while clipping his toenails into the trash can and ranting about Ronald Reagan. Good God. <laughs> that, uh, that is not fair. That's not fair to Samson. He's sitting right here. He's not a weird substitute teacher. What are you talking? Sure he is. You weren't. Look, maybe he's behaving himself right now. He still looks really creepy to me. But you weren't, th you don't know how bad it got last week, man. I'm not joking at all. And the guy kept talking about how his ass was smooth, smoother than a newborn's cheek. He wouldn't stop bragging about his bare buttocks to me. But you don't, I, there's an audio evidence of this. I'm not like making it up in a drunken stupor. Play the uh, clip. Yeah, they must you, have a you clip. Have Play it, you, you have me. clips? You're coming with clips? Play now? David Sampson talking about his ass, please. People know very well that my ass is not hairy. I think that People was taken out of context. Well. I think that was out of context. Out of what do you mean? The context was the he's an out of control creep. That was the context, <laughs> which reminds me, where's Stugatz? Is he back? Where is he? <laughs> he is not. He is not. Alas, we don't know where he is. He Samson's there, and Stugatz is still gone. That's just like fair is foul, and foul is fair. And I'm starting to get worried about Stugatz now. I mean, he is coming back at some point, right, Dan? This isn't one of those situations where next week you're going to tell me you sent him to live with a nice family in a farm upstate where <laughs> his feet are run around and do mushrooms to his heart's content. Please don't abandon him like you abandoned me last week with, with, with the creep of the Western world and his smooth ass. Uh, Stugatz will be back, and I'm happy that you're happy to see me. Normally you just insult me, so thank you for that. Ah, you can see the depths to which I've sunk. I need the support of a good man like you, uh, especially now, quite frankly, if I could be serious for a moment, because I do have, uh, I have seasonal affective disorder, and man, it is walloping me right now. I thought that was a winter yeah. affliction, was it not? It normally is. Let me, let me clarify. I have, a, I have a sports seasonal affective disorder, a very common affliction. This is real. It affects over 20 million American men. It happens when you, you know, you revolve your life around following the three major sports so that you're never left alone with your anxiety <laughs> about our increasingly <laughs> bleak future. And it's a, it's a very effective coping strategy for 51 weeks a year. And then there's this one horrific week in July oh, yeah. and we're all plunged into darkness and it's just a few days away now. It's not funny. I can hear its heavy steps growing ever closer behind me. And instead of distracting my mind, with what happened in last night's game or what's going to happen in tomorrow's game, soon I'm just going to be left staring into the unending void, Dan. Because, you see, if sports can end, here's how my mind works. If sports can end and the world goes on, then sports just don't matter, right? But I base my whole life around sports, which therefore means that I do not matter, Dan. And then, bang, okay? <laughs> Here come the intrusive thoughts about how Canada, Canada is now constantly on fire, isn't it? See, I'm not like a professional, but that seems bad to me, Dan Levitard. Because yeah. Canada is basically made of wood, right? Which means it's always going to be on fire now. It's never going to stop burning. So my whole climate migration plan is now screwed because I was going to go north. But now that's it's just as bad up there, right? Okay. No escape, Dan. All, right. All of us are doomed. You're spir We're doomed. You're, you're spiraling. <laughs> you, you need to take a deep breath. You take need a drink. To, <laughs> you need to meditate. Uh, take a drink. Yeah. And you got the home run derby, the All Star game. It's the beginning. Of, it's the beginning. Uh, beginning I mean, of next what are you week. <laughs> the beginning of the what? The beginning of nothing. They don't help. All Star game and home run. Those are not sports. 
all-star game that's got all the stakes and passion of a spring training game and the home run derby. You know what that is? That's baseball Baseball for people who hate baseball. That's what that is. <laughs> but I'm going to cling desperately to it and watch every second because after that, then there's just two days and nothing. It's just, it's just... Blackness. Two days. <laughs> thinking about how, thinking about how, the Supreme Court. They just took away people's rights based on a made-up case. That's what they just did. <laughs> it's not enough that they're an unelected legislature whose reign only ends in death. No, they got to rub our noses in their illegitimacy by justifying real discrimination with right-wing fan fiction. Discrimination, fan fiction. Just days, days after their corruption was laid bare for all the world to see. It's just, it's all falling apart. You gotta all of it, calm it's falling down. apart, Levitar. You gotta calm down. Think of better things. Think of Otani, Otani. Think of Otani. You know what? You're, thank you. I'm gonna take a, a breath here. I thought you take a drink. Otani. <laughs> Otani, Otani's having the greatest season in baseball history. He's leading the league in homers, fourth in strikeouts. He's redefining what is possible, isn't he? He's proof that God is real is what he is, <laughs> and he's also a very tall and very beautiful Japanese man. There we go. There we go. Think of Ellie, no Ellie De La Cruz. There you go. Ah, De La Cruz. Yeah. Dealing bases. De La Cruz hitting 450-foot bombs on the regular. The man's a bright, shining light for the future of baseball. All right. Okay. Okay, that helped. Thank you, Dan. Wow, that really helped. And to get through this week, I'm going to think of those great players. I'm just going to focus on that. I'm going to think of your friendship too, Dan, because you've been a good friend. And I will also, I'm probably going to do enough horse tranquilizers to kill Secretary at a second time as well. Yeah. <laughs> now that, that's going to be a deep K-hole. That, that K-hole is going to be so deep, I might actually find Stugatz in it. <laughs> All right, good. We got your mood better here now talking about sports. Last week, I think you were among the first. You beat the national media to the story of criticizing the idea of Damian Lillard to the heat. You were first, Brock Meyer. You still feeling good? Well, yeah, but apparently... Pat Riley's in a Miami basement somewhere working up the first five-team trade in history to turn into Shinola. So I guess maybe there's a chance. But you see, part of Dame's leverage there is his stated unhappiness in playing anywhere but Miami. Problem with that is I don't believe he'd ever do anything but play winning basketball wherever they sent him. Because he's no James Harden, Dame. Because when that right. bearded man stares at you with his dead eyes and promises that he's going to quit out there, oh boy, you know he means it. <laughs> that is a man who puts his whole ass into half-assing it. <laughs> Having no shame, that makes you a very dangerous man. Or at least, well, that's what the Metal Arc HR people keep telling me. Can, so you, uh, can you give me any of your thoughts? You're a media expert. You've been in this game a long time. The ESPN layoffs. What do you think about what happened there? Well, at the risk of getting upset again, uh, I think it was a sad day for anybody who follows sports because some of the best of the best got laid off there, and that's a terrible shame. I mean that because there are far, far more deserving candidates to be fired than them. Uh, right? Yeah. Okay, and you know that's true, Dan. In fact, <laughs> let's do top. Let's go top five. Oh, top yeah. five ESPN personalities still employed who should have been let <laughs> oh go God. instead. And, Dan, I want you to go first. <laughs> no, let's do a draft. Let's do a draft yeah. instead. Or as Simmons copyrighted all the stupid imaginary drafts. No, no, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not playing this game with you, Brock Meyer. Oh, yes, you are. Come on. Come on, you're no, playing. No, Oh, you. I know, though. No, no. You no. have a number one. Yeah. It's in your mind no, right now. It's burning a hole in your pocket. I'm not going to do it with you. I'm not going to do it publicly. Okay, well, maybe off the air. Well, you at least admit on air that you're pretty happy you jumped ship when you did because you were the rat on the Titanic that did not like the look of that iceberg. <laughs> and, uh, boy, if I ever see you hop on to some other outlet now, I will know to short the stock of the good people at DraftKings. I was asking for rat. your opinions, a fat rat. I mean, thank you. I, wow. I was asking. I can't believe I didn't say that. I, I didn't. Oh, I went on record saying I didn't say fat rat. Okay. I was just fat shamed. Thank you. I, I was thinking it though. I was asking you. I was asking you about the overall media landscape, not just the general firings and name names of more people who should be fired. The overall media landscape. Well, okay. I think uh, that the entertainment industry abandoned an advertising model of guaranteed profit 
to chase the infinite growth of Netflix and its subscription model, only to find Netflix to watch them double back and embrace an advertising model again. And now all these genius CEOs just f***ed it all up and lost a couple <laughs> dozen billion dollars are now covering their asses by firing people or burying the very work they greenlit to get some tax write down. And in the case of ESPN specifically, Disney's firing folks, not because they were overpaid, no, because they were properly paid. Because through their talent and years of excellence, they've been compensated greatly. That was their great crime, which makes me despair, Dan, for a future where those in power sacrifice everything that's good for just anything that's cheaper. They're trying to do it right now with AI, replacing all art with a computer regurgitation because programs don't have unions, do they, Dad? Okay, you're spiraling again. They don't. Again. I you're just called you Dad, and your you're, name's Dan. You're spiraling. You're my daddy. It's because, you might be. It's because you're spiraling. I've done it, too. It's because, it's because you're spiraling again. Get a hold of yourself. That was a weird overshare by Lord of the Rings nerdy lady that she calls you Dad. <laughs> and I'm freaked out by that. Oh, I mean, it happens. It's like the same number of syllables, <laughs> same first two letters, and sometimes you just say "dat." <laughs> you you kind of bleed it out there like a sheep, like a <laughs> wounded <laughs> sheep. <laughs> 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 not not even nerdy, not even nerdy Lord of the Rings lady can cheer me up today. I'm just gonna. Well, you well you the mantra, Shohei and Dela Cruz. Wait a mantra. minute. Let me just let me yes. re-regulate. Re we breathe in Shohei and out De La Cruz. Shohei, De La Cruz. Man, mid-July. Mm -hmm. It's just, I'm, I apologize to everybody over there. It's a dark time for me. I appreciate everybody's patience. By the end of next week, baseball's going to be back, and I'll be able to distract myself from the knowledge that we're, what are we doing, Dan? We're impotently watching late-stage capitalism commit planet-wide ritual suicide. Okay? <laughs> but pretty soon... NFL training camp will start up, and Aaron <laughs> Rodgers will say something insane, and everything will be all right again. All right, excellent. Good. Good close there. Good dismount. Uh, do, anything to plug on your way out, Brock Meyer? I'm really enjoying this segment with you, even though you uh, hurt all our feelings. <laughs> Look, I'm coming from a very – nobody hurts more inside than me. That's, that should be your consolation. And uh, No, I nothing to plug, but last, you missed my plug last week uh, of your AOL account. Which is, again, <laughs> Dan the Man Levitard, all one word, at AOL.com. Because, Dan, you run a workplace full of Gen Z employees. You can see them all there, milling about in there. People for whom vibes, vibes are the be-all and end-all. And yet you, you greet them daily with that rotting carcass of an email address. And guess what, Dan? The AOL vibes, they're not immaculate. No. <laughs> they're admitting that you are simultaneously lazy and out of touch. My goodness. Rancid AOL. vibes. Horrible, right? <laughs> I mean, why don't you send them messages on Friendster, you frickin' dinosaur? <laughs> All right. Excellent, Brock Meyer. Good talking to you. Thanks for stopping by again, sir. Bye, everybody. I'm so glad David Sampson didn't say anything. I can't even tell you how glad I am. He just sat there with his weird... I, re I realized who he was on, uh, on uh, Mad Men. He's Sal. He's Sal from Mad Men, by the way. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Brock Meyer. Oh, even his voice freaks me. You're worse than you and Mr. Met, two banes of my existence. Because Mr. Met is very handsy, and you're like verbally handsy. So I was Mr. Met. See you later, Brock. What, 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 Lord of the Rings lady? What is she? She's on a crazy tear today. What was that now? That was like some swallowed southern accent. Lord of the Rings I'm, I'm Jimbo Fisher, Coach Fisher, Texas a and Aggies. Go eggs. Okay. And what does that have to do with Mr. Met? Did he talk about Mr. Met? Oh, she's sinking below her chair now. Yeah, yeah, because she made it. Listen, you know, joke. Lord of the Rings, lady. I heard your review of that show, The Idol. By the way. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Wow, you really didn't like that. You like Mad Men. You like uh, lo the Lord of the Rings. Didn't care for the Idol. Did you? Did you hate all of the Idol equally, or did you find any character or piece of the Idol? A little David bit Sampson didn't like it either. Oh wow. Well, I would expect that from from. Uh, from weird, soulless Sal from Mad Men. With, with a with very nice bottom. ass. Yeah, with his lovely, there it is. Now it's nice. Oh! Sex, actual sexual harassment is now part of the show. Thanks to David. See you later, Brock Meyer. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. <laughs>